Okay, so um, here is a uh, work energy example with friction. Suppose you have a car. And let's say it uh, has an initial velocity this direction of, let's say, making up something as usual, 20 meters per second. And you're gonna stop, okay? Um, let's just see, wait, let me make sure. Real quick here, should have done this beforehand, but I'm not prepared. Okay, that's fine. Um, and so let's say it has a mass m, and let's say it has a coefficient of, let's say, it's, let's say you're slamming on the brakes. And the difference between slamming and not slamming is slamming, the, the wheels stop if you have good enough brakes, and the tires slide. Not slamming with any of the anti-lock brakes do this, they roll, okay, so you're using static friction for analog brakes and kinetic friction for sliding. Um, you could really do the problem either way, but I'm just going to randomly choose uh, sliding mu k uh, value. I'm making up a value of 0.5. Okay, so that's the coefficient of static friction. And so you want to stop this car, and the question is how how far does it take you to stop? Right there, when it says far, you should say okay, because you have two tools. You have the momentum principle and the work energy principle. But since we're trying to say, how far does it take to stop? Here's my car again. And we'll call this uh, distance S. Then we should think, oh, it'd be better to do that with the work energy principle, because that uses distance. You can do this with the momentum principle. But, and, you, and you should try that. But it's just a little bit easier with the work energy principle. OK, so first, let me draw a a diagram, a force diagram while it's stopping, what force are acting on it? Well, I have gravity. I have the normal force. And then I have the frictional force. So in this case, I do need to look at the net forces in the y direction. because I need to find the normal force. I need the normal force so I can find the friction force. So in this case, it's not accelerating up or down. So N minus mg equals zero. N equals mg. So the model for friction says the frictional force, the magnitude, is equal to mu k times N equals mu k mg. OK, but I'm not going to find the acceleration in the x direction. That's not what I want to do. I want to find out how far it takes to stop. OK, so I can use the work energy principle. So I can say the work done on the car is a change in energy of the car. And now the next thing is, well, what's my system? This is an important part that a lot of people skip. Um, I, I could choose, let me, in this case, let me choose just the car as my system. If you, if you wanted to. You could choose a car plus the earth, but I think in that case it may be kind of difficult to say whether friction is a, a force acting on the outside of the system or inside. So I think it's better to do it this way. Okay, so now I need to do the work uh, done on the car. Let me just say that, write that as work done by gravity plus work done by friction plus work done by the normal force equals just a change in kinetic energy. If it's just the car, it can't have potential energy. It only has kinetic. So I need to look at these three works. So first let me look at the work done by gravity. The work done by gravity is going to be the gravitational force times the distance, s, times the angle between the direction the car moves and the gravitational force. In that case, that's 90 degrees. So it's going to be cosine of 90 degrees, which is 0. So gravity does no work on this as it moves along that way. Now let's look at the normal force. Again, well we have N, S, cosine 90, again equals 0. So neither the, the 
floor put the ground pushing up or gravity pulling down do any work because the car is moving perpendicular to that. So no work done. So now we just have the work done by friction. Well, that's going to be the frictional force, mu k, mg, times the distance, s, times the cosine of the angle between them, and it's not zero. s is this way, f, it's really delta s, the vector, that way. And f is that way, the frictional force is that way. So the cosine, it's a cosine of 180 degrees, which is negative 1. So I get the work done by friction is negative mu k, mg s. So what does that mean? Can you do negative work? You can. Okay. If you do negative work, that means that the energy decreases. So we're okay there. Okay, let me erase this because I, I need more room. And so that's where I'm going to start. I, ha I already have that. Work equals negative mu k mg S. And that's going to be the change in kinetic energy. So that's going to be K2, the final, minus K1. So if I stop this car, what's the final kinetic energy? Well, K2, 1 half mv2 squared, but the final velocity is 0, so that's 0. And then the initial velocity is, this is V1. So I have negative mu k mgs equals negative one half mv1 squared. It's zero minus that. Okay. The negatives cancel. The mass cancels too. Okay. And then I can solve for s. s is going to be equal to v1 squared over two mu k g g. Okay, check the units here and check reasonableness. Uh, the units meters squared per second squared over, this has no units, meters per second squared does give me meters. That's good. The faster I'm going, the longer it takes to stop, the farther it takes to stop. The greater the, the coefficient of friction, the, the shorter you stop. Those all make sense, so that's good. So let's just put in some values here because I know how much, how happy that makes people. So this is going to be uh, 20 meters per second squared over 2 times 0.5 is just going to be 1 divided by and times 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's going to be about, this is 400 divided by 10, so 40 meters, approximately 40 meters. That seems reasonable, 40 meters to stop. Yeah, maybe your coefficient's higher than that. Probably is. I think in the previous problem I had a coefficient of 0.4 on wet roads, so. Okay, now let's take this to one other example. What if V1 equals 2 times, I'm sorry, 2 times 20? meters per second squared, meters per second. So 40. What if you're going twice as fast? Then nothing changes except in the end. I can calculate, let me calculate S2. Uh, it's just going to be, I'm going to put this as 2 times 20 squared over 9.8. So that's going to be equal to 4 times what we had before. So it's 160 meters. So when you double the speed, it doesn't take twice the stopping distance to stop. It takes four times the stopping distance to stop. Okay. Okay.